How often do you check the stock price? <laughs> well, I think uh, now we probably check it three, four times in a day. You know, of you've got all these apps. Companies? Oh yeah, you've got a convenient app on Apple, yeah. So when I pop it up, it just shows all the Inox Group companies, yeah. Huh. Uh, but other than that, till a year ago, nobody looked at the stock prices because we were going through this realignment. But I think we're now driven by uh, more value creation about uh, uh, growing the companies. And I think, as I said, Floro's just started. <laughs> Floro's just started. But 70% of the revenue is coming in from exports, such a large exposure to US as well as Europe. The rest of the world as well. Yeah, the 2023 with all this hard landing, soft landing, we don't know which way it's going to be. Um, how is that going to occur for the company? You know, I think How are you sounding so confident? Uh, you know, I think um, what we do at Floro is uh, very, very niche. Uh, the Floro polymer business, which is almost 65%, 70% of our, uh, of our top line and our profit, maybe more in terms of profitability, is a very, very niche business. Uh, very, very specialized product. These are advanced fluoropolymers. The pricing is fairly inelastic, right? We're really competing with uh, companies like uh, uh, Dupont, Dow, uh, 3M. These are not uh, generic uh, commodity chemicals and so on and so forth. So these are things, as I said, which are price and elastic. You have to, it's like Colgate, you know, in, in common parlance, whether you're going through a good phase or a bad phase, you're going to use Colgate, right? And you don't change Colgate in a... We're going to continue using refrigerators for which you make... No, you know. so we make fluoropolymers. So 70% yeah. of the fluoropolymers, so refrigerants or gases is maybe 10% of the business. Commodity chemicals would be about 15% of the business. 70% is uh, advanced photopolymers and advanced materials. Those are things which are used in EV, which are used in 5G, which are used in the auto sector, which are used in uh, uh, increasingly in solar. Uh, very, very high end, aeroplanes and so on and so forth. So this is not your refrigerant gases and the commodity chemicals, which are 20, 25% of Gujarat photo. So the 70% which we supply are very specialized needs. Hmm. And they're inelastic. You have to, you're married to us. Uh, the, 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 you know, the, the approval cycle is very, very elongated. Uh, very specialized products, like I said, it's taken us almost seven to eight years to get to where we are. Uh, very difficult uh, to get into. It takes four or five years to get your products approved. And nobody wants to approve new products because, you know, it's like Colgate, as I say, in very common parlance. You know, under there's a Baba Ramdev miracle, you don't change Colgate, right? You're used to it. Yeah. Or at least I've been using Colgate for the past 30 years. I've now changed it. People once approve your products, don't change. So as I mentioned, the two or three uh, European American competitors we work with are guys who've not been able to scale up or grow these businesses due to ESG concerns. Also a lot of the realignment which has happened in those businesses globally. And we've used that opportunity to really scale up. So we are one of the largest players in Europe, probably the largest exporters into Europe. We control the European markets. We are among the largest players in America now, and we supply it to the rest of the world. So I think people look, as, look at Floro as a savior, uh, if I may say so. Mm. And I think we're expanding capacities. We've got people on the ground. We've got warehouses on the ground. You're uh, doubling your CapEx too. Well, we are- uh, Almost doubling it. We've announced a CapEx program of about a billion dollars. Uh, we've done about 1,400 crores over this year. So the rest of it will play out over the next three to four years. That's on the, a lot of the specialty uh, fluoropolymers and uh, battery chemical complex which we're setting up for the EV vertical. EV vertical. But yes, it's under fluoro. It's actually under a... And new factory, new, new plants as well. Oh, we've got multiple new plants coming up. New sites and new plants. So our existing sites are chocker block. We are building out a new site. Uh, we've acquired land for another site which we will be building out in the next two to three years. So a lot of excitement, a lot of action mm. uh, under that vertical. Now tell me why is it that, and you also want to be in the battery business for EVs, which you have said is going to be the sunrise sector, new age, where a lot of the new business is going to be. Tell us more about that. So, um, and that will all be housed under a different company. So it's a 100% subsidiary of Gujarat Floro. Which you will list another time. God willing, yes, at some point. That's the plan time. I would imagine. Uh, yes. Uh, I think it's a different basket of investors. I think uh, valuations are different in that entity. Also, the growth which will play out under that entity is, uh, God willing, uh, phenomenal as we move forward. Uh, so that's a 100% sub called GFCLEV, as I said. We've announced, uh, under GFL overall, we've announced a CapEx program of about uh, seven to 8,000 crores over the next three to four years. As I mentioned, we've done about 1,500, 2,000 out of that. We would be spending about five to 6,000 crores as things stand today. Uh, and primarily 80% of that 
is towards the battery chemical business and the fluoropolymer business, which is housed, which will be housed under the battery uh, battery vertical, as I may as I may say. We would have about thousand to fifteen hundred odd crores under Gujarat Fluoro towards the normal fluoropolymer expansion and the refrigerant expansion, which is taking place. Having said that, under the battery chemical business, I think. Uh, we have a unique opportunity wherein we control the fluorine molecule. Yeah? So you've got maybe two or three players in the Indian landscape who, 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 who are in the fluorine vertical. But I think... Uh, who are competitors? Naveen Fluoro? There's Naveen and SRF, SRF are the two other guys big, who are in the yeah. uh, fluorine vertical. Historically competitors with us under fluoro uh, refrigerants. I think we're the only guys under the fluoropolymer business. None of these guys are there. Uh, we've taken that route. Some of these guys have grown in refrigerants and in specialty chemicals. We focused on fluoropolymers because we think that's more um, uh, uh, sticky. You don't need to keep developing different things, even though we have more than 100 variants under the fluoropolymer business. Having said that, uh, I think the battery chemical complex is something where we are a first mover. I think we've got technology which is very, very uh, uh, limited, uh, very, very scarce to source. Uh, and I think our first uh, battery chemical plant should go live in the next three to four months. Where? Uh, that's in our site uh, in uh, the H, around the H in Gujarat. Uh, that's a small 1800 ton plant. But I think that's something which will see hockey stick growth as we move. So once the first plant is up, uh, it'll take four or five months to get... Do you already get... have clients? Do you already have people you're going to supply to? Or you have to hit the market? We're talking to everybody. Or you have to go to market Everyone yet? is talking to us. Everyone needs that. Uh, but obviously, you know, once you set up the plant, you know, it takes two, three, four months to stabilize, get your approvals and so on and so forth. Much quicker for us, God willing, because these are existing guys who've already seen all our fluoropolymer businesses and our specialty. But, but when will you be ready to go to market? So as soon as the plant is up, maybe 30, 40 days in terms of stabilizing the plants, and then our initial samples will go out across. The, so samples have gone out for some of the products from our proto uh, lab plants. But once our commercial plants are up and running, we will be sending out these samples. And this will be for what kind of batteries? Lithium ion batteries? Oh, these are all lithium batteries which go yeah. into EV. We also have sodium batteries which will kick in. But, you know, chemicals, you know, you've got, you've got, so the first plant is something which goes into the lithium battery plants. Then we'll have uh, electrolytes which will come in. We'll have a lot of additives and a lot of other battery chemicals which we will be expanding into. So tell me 10 years from now, where will the group be? In terms of top line, in terms of market Whichever way you want to see it. Uh, 10 years is a long way okay, ahead. Okay, 5 years. Let's put it like this. I think in the next 5 years, uh, we would expect the group to be a, a 25 to 30,000 crore revenue group. We would expect uh, our EBITDA to be north of a billion dollars. That's the vision. And we would expect, in terms of market cap, to be north of uh, uh, 20 billion. How far are you from all this? Is it our viewers can also understand? I think we are working on all the aspects which we want to achieve. Uh, and God willing, I think, uh, for, well, fortunately for us, all the verticals in which we operate, right, they're all growing businesses. But These a lot of fund managers now, for example, are saying, has specialty chemical, because you said this is just the beginning of the ride for uh, GFL, and I'm going, I'm, and valuations. Has it peaked out? Because you're painting a very different picture. When we talk to fund managers, you know, they're of the view that, yeah, we, we spotted specialty chemicals, and maybe now it's, overstretched and, you know, time to book profits? You know, I think uh, they've seen specialty chemicals from the perspective of more or less commoditized parts, right? So you've got some people making X, Y, Z. Uh, over the past two, three years, some of them also had significant profitability thanks to COVID, thanks to supply chain issues and so on and so forth. I think some of them have come down. There's no rocket science in what a lot of these guys do. I think... Our ride started only seven, eight months ago. We were always underplayed at that point in time because of the realignment, the mess which was going on. And we were not communicating at that point in time. So as I said, our ride started about a year ago. We're just at the brink of where we need to be. What we play in are advanced fluoropolymers, advanced materials. Very, very niche business. And the, and, and the growth which is ahead of us is phenomenal. With 32% yes, like gross margins. Yes, and it includes... Uh, with 32% with, e with type margins. Well, I would just say we've, what we've said is we should be at 30% plus margins going forward. We've had 34% margins, we've had 38% margins. But we're not saying we'll be 34, 38, 60, 50. We're just saying we should be at a 30% uh, 
a margin level on a sustainable business on a sustainable basis uh, i think the the segments in which we operate are very niche our fluoropolymer capacities are only going up as we are moving forward our ev business is just starting up yeah we've done nothing until now there just the first plants kicking in and and you know to be honest uh, as the ev ev business takes off in india right so you know you've got various estimates you've got people saying the ev penetration today is 2% it will become 20% 30% 60% you pick up any number the studies just keep changing on an ongoing basis so we are at 2% and we supply zero at this point in time now look at the growth the possibility which is going to kick in so frankly speaking our first plant is only kicking in is it going to go 10x is it going to go 15x is it going to go 5x and then various additives and electrolyzers and a lot of other stuff which will kick in where will this go i'm not going to share all that information at this point in time but i think the trajectory in front of us is phenomenal all i can say is whatever we've invested in fluoro in the 25 years of it being around we'll probably invest much more than that in the next 3 to 4 years what you invested in 25 years is what you're going to invest in next, in the next three to three four, to four years. years it's a great headline yeah. and with that devansh we are out of time thanks so much for giving us this thank interview you. all the pleasure. very best thank you so much antara